Kwame Brown had been a hometown hero who one day hoped to become mayor of the district. Instead, in a deal with federal prosecutors, Kwame Brown agreed to resign from office after pleading guilty to bank fraud. For five years, Brown has refused interview requests from the Washington Post, every TV station in town. That is until tonight. He's live in studio for an off-script interview. We say it's about time. Do you have anything you can tell us, Chairman? Are you going to resign at this point, sir? Hello and welcome to Our Script. I'm Bruce Johnson. Kwame Brown was sentenced to one day in custody of federal marshals and six months home detention. That sentence came down in U.S. District Court. He didn't steal taxpayer dollars or take kickbacks like other D.C. office holders have done in the past. Kwame Brown lied on a bank loan application. People were dumbfounded by this. They felt there might be more to this story. They, they, they had to, they, they couldn't believe this was all there was to toppling this guy who was on his way, many people thought, to becoming perhaps even mayor. Kwame Brown is here in the studio tonight. You called me not long ago and said, it, it, it's time now because I've been bugging you for five years like everybody else for an interview. You say now is the time. Why, why is now the time? Are you planning a political comeback? I mean, I just think it's after a number of years. Um, really disappointing residents of the District of Columbia, disappointing myself, disappointing my family, and being able to then have the resiliency to, to get back up, to continue to inspire others not to do the same thing that I did, that it was time to just continue to move on. I, I have you know, no intention to run for a political office because we have in this city great young folks that are ready to step up to the table, that are out now knocking on doors. And it's time to allow the next generation of leaders to step up and move the city forward. Yeah, Kwame, a lot of people just can't believe that you were toppled by a, a simple lie on a loan application. You say it was a home equity loan. You were trying to what, refinance something? It was a home equity loan that, that uh, this was probably like nine or 10 years ago. It was paid off a year after. Uh, I received a loan, so, but at the end of the day, I take full responsibility. The bank was not owed any money. The bank was paid off five years prior to any of this investigation. But I think it's still wrong. You can't lie on a home equity loan application. What did you lie about? And just as I, I said I made more money than I did, which was wrong. And I just want to let people know, if you apply for a home equity loan, to be truthful and don't lie on any loan application. Because if you do that, that can be a federal offense because the bank is insured by the federal government that money, right? Well, I, I didn't know, I, I should have known that, you know, it was, it was wrong. Okay. And, but more importantly, I think I was the first person in the history of the District of Columbia to ever be uh, convicted of it. But I, I, want, I want people to know, don't do that, that's wrong. We got it, I wanna walk through this though. The they were thing. not investigating people filing loan applications. They were looking into campaign irregularities, right? That's what they were looking for, right? I mean, clearly there was mistakes made. They were looking for campaign, uh, you know, money that was stolen, that was missing. I think, you know, the story's out there a hundred times. Um, clearly none of that existed. But what did exist was a mistake that was made, you know, five or six years prior. And, you know, I took full responsibility for it. And I've been able to now move along with my family and to continue to create a life and to really inspire others to I got it, but same. was that part of the deal? Did federal prosecutors say, we want the job, the position, the office of council chair, we want you to vacate that. That's part of the deal. I think it was well documented in the in the in the newspaper that they that they you know clearly you know it was time for me to resign. And at some point, when you continue to fight over and over again, and for the good of the city, and I think at the end of the day, it's bigger than one person. One person makes a mistake. How big or how small that mistake is, this is about how do we move this great city forward. And I thought the best thing was to do was to continue to move forward and not be. How, how did your family deal with it? Your wife is well known. Uh, you, you're, you're from a, a, a long line of, 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 of D.C. people. You've been here a long time. Your father's, you, you know, your late father, well known in D.C. politics. How did, how did your family deal with this? Well, you know, I had two small kids, and uh, let me tell you, I'm, I'm so impressed with my kids on how they've been able to go from you know daddy stole money from a campaign to you know daddy lied on a mortgage applica loan application to daddy now back and and they inspired me more my fathers inspired me for they always inspired me to have resiliency if you fall down get back up if if you can help someone help someone and i think that's what this is really all about it's about taking responsibility it's about saying that you know things happen that you may not even agree with all the time and as, as a person such as myself, who looks like myself, we can't continue to, 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 to fight about it. We just gotta move on. What have you been doing the last five years? I've been having a great time. I've you know, been a basketball coach. I got a daughter that's about to graduate, so clearly college applications, I'm doing that all day long. I've been able to 
well, I work for uh, on a board at Marshall Heights Community Development Corporation. And you know, clearly I'm running, a, starting a business. I started a business five years ago. We're out here trying to do what we can to employ DC residents and to continue to make sure I can provide for my family. Uh, do you have your foot in uh, DC politics? Are you supporting anybody? What, what about the recent uh, uh, public uh, uh, campaign finance bill that the uh, DC council gave tentative approval to the other day unanimously, which the mayor opposes? Where do you stand on that? Well, I mean, you're asking me, I guess I don't, uh, I just think that uh, I have a problem when I have to use my taxpayer dollars to fund someone that may, you know, who may, uh, who I disagree with. I think a five to one split was very, very big, you know, so that means everyone can just go and, and raise money and we have to pay for it as taxpayers. So, so you're opposed to this legislation? No, I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I think there's bigger issues in this city, such as our kids are not being able to read and write, to people being able to afford to live here in the city, to finding jobs, to making sure that we uh, meet all our environmental standards and continue to support what this mayor is doing to try to move this great city forward to be focused on, you know, you know, you know, uh, whether we support that one thing or another. I just haven't really looked into it because that's not what my focus is. I want to clear one more, more thing up uh, because we were talking on the phone. Uh, your, your brother also uh, had to go to prison. That, and, and he was a part of your campaign. Was that for campaign violations? No. Okay. That, that was for what? Uh, for the, one, it was for the exact same thing. So when you have a family uh, that the only two people in the District of Columbia that has ever been charged with that crime was us with, on lying on a, a mortgage application, it's tough. But it, we now come together to continue to tell folks, be honest, be open, be straight, no matter what you think, do the right thing. And, that, and that's what it's really all about. And we're just moving forward. It's mistakes were made. We've learned from those mistakes. I've learned from mistakes. I became a better person from those mistakes, and it's time to and it's time to move forward. And that's and that's where I am. I, I really want to thank uh, the judge. I believe his name was Judge Richard. I can't remember his last name. We was in court because anytime you go through this type of situation, you 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 start off being angry, then you start off being very disappointed in judge yourself. Judge Leon, the, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, Judge Leon, that you're yeah. disappointed in yourself. But when I got in front of Judge Leon, who's a who they say is a conservative judge. And Judge Leon says, you know, Mr. Brown, if, if, if you wasn't who you were, you wouldn't even be in my courtroom. And so I wanted to take time to thank him. Because I was there, at the that, judge. At that oh. at, he, said, he said, if you were sitting in front of me, if you was anyone else, you would not be in my courtroom. I, I was there. The judge was also concerned, and he turned to the prosecutors, and he said, was any money stolen? Was right. all the money paid back? Okay. And, they and said, then well, he sentenced you to one day. Well, he said, well, let's, well, two things. One, the judge said, as you said, if he was anyone else, he would not be here. Two, the judge said, was any money missing that he has to pay back and right. they said no right. Mr. Brown doesn't know any money and he said right. you guys have forced my hand that I have to do this so that's why the judge did it but I think his point that said if you was anyone else you wouldn't be here was a part that really God blessed me at that moment to have relief to say you know what this is how you fight back because there, there is a, a rainbow at the end of the tunnel. Well, one, one more question is it true that you walked all the way home from downtown Washington your sister court to Hillcrest Heights day of sentencing you walked home yeah, I think it's, yeah, I got, I, I left right. and I walked out. I think it's nothing better right. than leaving and walking and thinking about, clear you know, your head. clear your head. Absolutely. Kwame right. Brown, thanks a lot, man. Appreciate no, thank this. You. All right.